Hello everyone. Uh, today's video is going to be a little different than my normal Gentoo Linux related topics. Today we're covering writing Python scripts in the Krita drawing program. As you can see, I'm in Krita right here. Uh, for those of you who don't know, in version 4.0 of Krita, the functionality was added to create Python scripts to control and automate certain things about the Krita application. Um, things like applying filters to images or programmatically editing images or even creating your own dockers which are these little trays here or brushes or various other things like that that you can use python to control in a programmatic way through krita now i am not personally an artist but i do use krita from time to time to edit images such as with my thumbnails based on my research there is not a video on this topic anywhere on youtube so i thought this was a good opportunity for me to go ahead and share what i have learned about krita scripting in python um, so let's go ahead and get started before we get started, I should note that this is not going to be a general Python tutorial. Um, I'm expecting you to already understand Python, the language, before going into this tutorial. Covering the whole language here as a primer is, is outside the scope of this guide. But Python is a pretty quick and easy language to learn, so if you don't already know it, then it's pretty easy to learn it from the documentation that's available. And there's tons of tutorials online in video and text format that can quickly get you up to speed on the basics of Python. We're not going to be talking about anything too advanced in the Python programming language beyond things like using classes and objects. It's really going to stay pretty close to the basics. And I should also note that the version of Python that is incorporated into Krita is actually Python 3. So those of you who only know Python 2 might notice the syntax is a little bit different. So yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. Now the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to enable the scripter. This is a very simple IDE and Python interpreter actually built into the Krita application that you can use to write Krita scripts and see them in action quickly. We're going to enable that here because I'm pretty sure that it's not always enabled by default on a new install of Krita. So in order to do that, we're going to want to go here to Settings, Configure Krita, and go down here to the Python Plugin Manager section. And we're going to want to scroll down to where it says Scripter and just check that. Then we can click OK. And then we'll want to restart the application. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right here. Okay, and we're back in it. So now if we want to use the scripter, we'll want to go to Tools, under Scripts, and click Scripter. And this will bring up a simple interface right here. If you've ever used the Idle editor for Python, it's kind of similar to that. And this is actually a full interpreter for the Python language. So we can do things like print, hello, and then run. And you can see here it says hello. So you can basically use this interpreter here to run any kind of arbitrary Python code that you want to run. Um, one thing that I like to do, it is a little bit difficult to see that light blue colored text on this white background. So you can go here to File, Settings, and I like to change it to the Python Vim syntax because to me that's a lot easier to read. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started actually writing a Krita script. Now the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to import the Krita module. So we're going to say here from Krita in all lowercase import star for all. Now what we're just saying is from the Krita module import everything. Those of you who've used Python before this should be pretty familiar to you. Now next we're going to want to perform some simple action using Krita. And the way that we're going to do almost all of our actions in Krita is with the interface Krita.instance. Now Krita.instance is a object through which you can interact with basically everything that the currently running instance of Krita can do. Using this you can access things like the documents that you're drawing images to, or the brushes, or the effects that are built into Krita, the color selector, all of those things. So you're going to be using this Krita.instance construction quite a lot. Now for this particular demonstration we're just wanting to make something happen. So let's do Krita.instance and we'll say dot action and then the argument 10 underscore brushes close quote closing parentheses and then dot trigger now let's go ahead and run this and I'll show you what it does all right as you can see by running that what we have done is we have brought up the 10 brushes dialog window this is another built-in Python script that comes with Krita and it can be activated by passing the name of that action to the dot action method. Now using this method we can actually create dialogues for lots of other options like there is the 10 scripts dialog. This right here allows you to assign built-in scripts to hotkeys. There are other things like 
we can create the Python scripter dialog, which will, you probably have guessed, open a new Python scripter window. Now this is just a quick demonstration of the things that you can do with Python scripting in Krita. It's a good example of what you would use Krita.instance for. But there are hundreds of different things that Krita.instance can do, and this is just a small sample, so let's look at another one right quick. Now another useful thing that you can do with the Krita.instance object is to do things like create new documents. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's say that doc equals, and then once again we're going to call Krita.instance, and then here we're going to call the method create document. Now as you can see here, if I move the scripter to the side, I have no documents open. But we want to open a new document here programmatically with Krita and Python, so let's go ahead and do that. Now the first arguments that we're going to have to pass to the create document method are going to be the width and the height. Now let's say that we want it to be 100 by 100, so a very small image. And then next we're going to pass the name, so let's just call it doc1 for document1. The next argument is going to be the color model, and we only want to do the regular default RGBA for red, green, and blue, and alpha, that is transparency. Next will be the color depth, and we're going to do, once again, the default, which is U8 for 8-bit integer color depth. The next argument is actually the profile, but we don't care about using a specific profile here. We'll use the default just fine, so let's go ahead and just leave that blank. And here the last argument that we're going to pass is going to be the resolution. And the default 120.0 resolution is fine. All right, so now that will create a new document for us. But if we go ahead and run the script right now, you'll notice that nothing seems to have happened back here. Well, that's because while we have succeeded in creating a new document, we haven't actually switched the view to it. So in order to do that, we're going to once again call Krita.instance, and then we're going to say active window, which is going to refer to the currently active window that is part of this Krita instance. And then we're going to want to say add view and pass the document that we just created here. Now what this is going to do is this is going to cause the currently active window to switch its view to include this document that we've just created. So let's go ahead and run that now. And as you can see, a new document was created right back here. It's a transparent 100 by 100 pixel image. If we go here and we click image and look at properties, you can see that all of the arguments that we passed here in our creator.instance.create document call can be found here, such as the 120 PPI resolution, the 8-bit integer color depth, RGB alpha color model, and including the width and height of the image itself. So that's a very useful way that you can create documents. Maybe you want to create bulk documents of some kind and using this particular method in Krita, with Python, you can automate that. Okay, one last thing that I want to demonstrate how to do with Python in Krita is actually using Python to edit images. Specifically, we're going to demonstrate that method by applying a filter to an image that already exists. As you can see back here, I have this image of a lighthouse. Now, I want to apply a filter to that image. We can do this in Krita pretty easily, but it's also possible in Python. So I'm going to go ahead and do it in Python here to show you how it's done. All right, so the first thing that we're going to want to say is n equals Krita.instance dot active document. That is the current image that we have selected for editing here. Then I'm going to say dot active node. Now in Python, Layers, such as this layer one right here, of an image are referred to as nodes. And so what we're saying here is in the current active document, the current picture that we're editing, I want to get the current active layer, that is the current selected layer. And we're going to assign that to the variable n. All right, next, I'm going to say f equals instance dot filter. And then the argument that I'm going to pass is, as a string, auto contrast. Now what this is doing is this is getting by name a current filter that exists within Krita. That is, we are, we are assigning the auto contrast filter as an object in Python to the name f. If you go up here under filters, you can see that it is under the adjust section, auto contrast. We are assigning that filter object, the object within Python that represents that function within Krita, to the variable f so that we can use it later. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to say f.apply, that is apply the filter 
And the arguments, the first thing we want to pass is in, because the first argument has to be a node. So we're going to apply this filter to layer one here. And then the next is going to be a rectangular area that this filter will cover. Well, we know that we want to start in the top left-hand corner, so we'll start with 0, 0. But now we want to cover the entire image with this. So we can go to the image properties here and see that the dimensions are 1280 by 853. So those are what we want to pass here. 1280 for width and 853 for height. Now this will apply the auto contrast filter to the entire image back here on layer one, the active node. But there's actually one more line we want to add here before we finish this script, and that is critta.instance.active document dot refresh projection. Now what this is going to do is refresh the image so that we can see the filter be visually applied. You'll have to do this each time you apply a filter to an image. When you edit an image yourself here with Krita, refresh projection is applied across the image as you go. And the same is true for when you apply filters using the built-in dialog. But when you do it programmatically with Python here, you're going to have to tell Krita to refresh the projection in order for it to actually do it. All right, well, let's move the scripter out of the way a little bit, and we will go ahead and run this. And as you can see, it's applied the auto contrast filter to the lighthouse here. We can move this out of the way a little more, and we can see that it looks very different than it did before. We can apply that repeatedly. Doesn't make much of a difference after the first time because of the way the auto contrast filter works. But this is a really neat method for applying your own filters in an automated way with Python to Krita. All right, before I close this video out, I want to link to a couple of good resources for learning more about scripting Python in Krita. Uh, the first is actually in the Krita official documentation, the Introduction to Python Scripting page. This page here is actually the sort of guide that I followed to make this video. This video follows this page fairly closely and covers a lot of the same topics. This is not like an in-depth reference for the Python scripting functionality in Krita, but it's a good introduction, as it says, to how Python scripting works in Krita. Another good resource that you can use is the KDE API reference for the Krita application. Now, this is a pretty dense document and it's not laid out in the way that those of you who are used to learning from, let's like, say, the Python reference might be used to seeing this kind of thing. But this is really the most detailed reference material that exists out there for Python scripting in Krita. Really what it does is it covers the cute based objects and function calls and how they are translated into Python for scripting purposes. And like I said, it's pretty dense and difficult to, uh, to parse sometimes, but if you're going to take a deep dive into Python scripting in Krita, this is really going to be your best friend right here. And I will link both of these pages below in the description, so be sure to check them out when you're done watching the video. All right, thank you all for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, this has just been an introduction and general overview of scripting with Python in Krita. Um, I'm, I intend to make several more videos about this topic and go into depth about the various subjects that are involved with scripting in Python in Krita one by one. Um, but hopefully this was helpful to you as a sort of getting your feet wet exercise, and I hope you'll tune in and watch my other videos as they come out. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.